Fabians, Fave City Central. Woo! New name. Who this? Who this? It's you. It's us. So exciting. Welcome back to the pre-show with MK Ginge. That's me. And I am so excited to be with you guys today. If it's your first time and you are with us virtually, make sure to write something in the comment section because we want to know that you're there. And if it's your first time and you are with us in person, make sure to do something with your body. Wave your hands. I don't know. Jump up and down. We want to be able to hug you and let you know that we are so excited that you are with us. Also, shout out to our eCampus partners. We love y'all. Listen, like I always say, you add to the experience of this service. There are so many other places you could be. You decided to be with us. We are excited. Listen, speaking of excitement, these last two weeks, I mean, whoa, the stretch conference was amazing. Super Seed Sunday was amazing. I'm going to talk more about that a little later. Got some other special things coming up for you guys as well. But listen, it's important to be connected to the right house, the right voice, and be in the right soil for your life, especially as we close out this year. That's true, isn't it? Yes, it is. But listen, we got a great show coming up, but you guys know how we like to start. Your first video is coming right up. We'll be right back with a special guest. Preston said when he was younger, he got baptized because somebody else wanted him to do it, and today, he is getting baptized because he has decided to do it in line with his own personal salvation. So we are excited for Brother Charles Preston Amen. today. And Brother Charles, we can't dip you in water, but we're going to pour a bottle of uh, water over you and just acknowledge that you have been baptized in the body of Christ. Go ahead, Brother D. Amen. All right, okay, so y'all, you know, let's get a man of God ahead. Of videos ever, just for you. As a matter of fact, Josh sent me that video, and I just <laughs> want to say I'm grateful we don't do baptisms like that here. But amen, God bless that church. Like I said, <laughs> I have a special guest with me today. Can you guys please give it up for the amazing Curtis Jones, the trombone player thank to you, the thank stars? You. <laughs> Her, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. You're very booked and busy. Yeah, so you know, sure hey, we blessed. Oh, blessed and busy. Bless, blessed and okay, busy. Blessed yeah, and busy. yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> so you were able to cut the schedule for us. A little bit. Just oh, a little a bit. Li yeah, okay, I got a little, little small. Got, well, we're great. Then the jet. I got to get back on the jet. Got to get back on the jet. Okay. Got you. So let's, you know, move as quickly as possible. But Curtis, we're both church kids. We both grew up in Definitely. church. Definitely. That baptism. Was wild. The water? Right? Yeah, the, this? It's a bottle of water for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you saw it, you said, is that it? Is yeah, it I'm like. Else? You want him to be done. That would be a little cold, wouldn't yeah, it? Just right on, only on the back only? Yeah, that's all they had. <laughs> so they're using what they had. I guess hey, that's, a, that's hey. a good thing, right? God honors it. God, amen. There you go. There you go. There you God go. honors it. So <laughs> listen, Curtis, I want to know, and the people want to know, sure. how long have you been connected to the ministry? I've been here four years now. Four it's been four years since 2020. Years. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's been uh, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey to see how things have uh, you know progressed and things mm -hmm. have changed over the pandemic. But mm -hmm. it's been pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, cool. everybody points you out. You're the Oh yeah, yeah, cool yeah, 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 yeah. It's me. Cool it's me. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love it. You're like a rock star for Jesus. Oh man, yes, that's rock star that, for that, Jesus. That, that, uh, okay. Of that, I learned um, just from you know knowing you that you mm -hmm. were a youth pastor. You've been yes, a youth I was. Two ministries. Correct? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. That's yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, really, yeah. Really cool. I really enjoy serving. Oh, definitely. Look at definitely. that. Look at that. Yeah. Shout out to your beautiful wife, Erica. Hey, and baby. Your son, Oscar. Hey, little man. I wanted him to bring. Y'all seen Oscar before? We may put a picture up, but y'all. <laughs> but dad says that he was my fur baby. You know, he wouldn't make it to the car ride. So nah, he, he wouldn't he okay. make the car okay, ride. Okay, right gotcha. All right. And also, Kurt, you're not just here with us on Sundays and throughout the week. Mm -hmm. You are on the road yes, with yes, Bay City yes. Music. Pastor Tim takes you everywhere. Yes, he does. Yeah, with your flashy <laughs> trombone. Who has a sparkly, <laughs> crystallized? What, yeah. what is, explain that trombone. So the trombone, um, I got custom made. We got the custom made for the Stella Awards. And we've been, we've been taking it around. It's been a big, uh, it's been a big deal. Yeah. It really has. Yeah, I heard yeah, your yeah. rates change on the trombone. Oh, the yeah, yeah. It went from here to way up here. <laughs> so 
pay the fancy one. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. But that goes to the church. Oh. It goes directly to the church. Does it? Yeah, I'll yeah, follow yeah. up on that when the cameras are off. <laughs> um, anyway, you don't just play the trombone. You're also on Pastor Tim's creative team. Yes, yes. And you're also involved in wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. I call him yeah, all the yeah. time. Pastor Tim yeah. gives us a vision. Me and Kurt like, okay, what you think about this? Should we mm -hmm. do this? Because we like to represent. Right, we like to represent. We like to put it on. There you go. We like we to put it on. To, yeah, know, yeah. serve yeah. the Lord and still look great. Absolutely. Yeah, I Absolutely. think our pastors do a great job of that. They do. They do a, a fantastic Dr. job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. So, I want to know a teaching or, or a word that you have heard here that okay. has had major impact on oh, your wow. life, you and your wife's life. Please share that with um, me. Systematic Righteousness. Yeah, that series was uh, absolutely amazing. That was like my first real series with Pastor Mike uh, when I first got to the church, and it, like, it was life-changing for us. Oh, wow. It really was. That's so, amazing. yeah. And I heard you sharing with Pastor Tim about your experience for your first super season. Yes, how, that was crazy. How did you crazy. feel being in that environment? Matter of fact, Kurt, I heard we have raised over three million wow. dollars. Wow! Wow! And that on Sunday, yeah. some individuals will still be still be sewing. Yes. Yeah. And so the yeah. number is going to go beyond that. We have gone beyond the, the, mm -hmm. the goal that we had. Mm -hmm. I mean, the environment was like... Oh my God, it was electrifying. Yes. Yeah, it was electrifying. It was so life-changing. It was such a soul moment. Wow. I felt like wow. hearing the testimonies of people that were giving. They might have gave a little a few years ago, and now they had a whole lot to give, which was absolutely phenomenal to see the blessings in people's lives. So For yeah, sure. it was Did really good. Did you dope. see the excitement? Of oh my people? goodness. Like I said, they they started here and they were excited to say, I mm -hmm. trusted God for this mm -hmm. and I was able to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, it was and phenomenal. It was an amazing was. Yeah. service. You had to be there. Well, listen, Kurt, um, are you going to come back if we invite you? Sure. Okay. Sure. I'll come back. I'll make some time. Uh, okay. I'll make some time. Okay. Well, next time we want Oscar. <laughs> we're going to bring Oscar next time. We're going to make sure he's here. He's set up, get him right here in the middle. Uh, let him set up, you know. Okay. That's I my guy. That's my little wait. guy. Well, thank you for being with well, us. Well, thanks for having sir. me. Thanks All for right. having me. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's almost time for service. That is mm -hmm. why we are right. here. Make sure that you eat something so you can focus. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get on your diet next time. Oh, yeah. This we'll talk about that next time. Clean eater. Yeah, Whatever yeah, yeah. you need to do to stay focused, get something in your stomach. Make sure you got your pen, mm -hmm. your pad out, your Bible. It's time for the word. Hey. But we're going to start off with an amazing worship experience from Faith City Music. Woo. Love you guys, and see you next time. Free show with MK Ginge. Hey. See ya.
come to worship you once again we thank you for the privilege to bow before you to exalt your holy name thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit God, we lift your name high. Say hands up. Hands up. God, we lift you high. Oh God, we lift you high. Our hands are up. So God, we declare. Oh God, we lift you high. 
other names fade away until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place.
cross his lips and say, let all the other names. Come on, worshipers, let's go for it today. Come on, you say, let all. Depression, anxiety. Yeah, there's only you. Come on, say, let all. The Jesus, take your place. Is Lord. Jesus, in my body you will Jesus, in my family you will Jesus, oh Jesus take your place Worshipers, it's just you and your father this morning. It's just you and your father this morning. Block out every naysayer, block out every opposing force. It's just you and God this morning. Oh, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. the name of Jesus. Will you open up your mouth and give God a shout of praise right there? I said, will you open up your mouth and shout like you know him? Well, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's already feeling like a Jesus party. Tell them how good they look and how good they, they smell and how they pick the right person to sit next. I need to know which section came here with the most power today. Is it over here? Is it this section right here? Which section? I want you to type in the comments and say it's actually the E campus last time. Oh, Jesus, take, Jesus, take your place. Please be seated and direct your attention to the faith vision monitors. Teresa Proctor and I have your announcements and guess what it's still October so you know what it's still the month of perfection but before we dive into our announcements we have to celebrate we have to celebrate so if it is your birthday or your anniversary stand up and do your dance do your dance whatever that looks like right but we want to celebrate you so happy birthday happy anniversary and if you're joining us on Line, type a B into the chat for your birthday and an A for anniversary. Oh, I have a question for you. If it's your birthday, what would your age be if you didn't know your age? Oh, think about that. Just think about that. But happy birthday and happy anniversary. Pull out your cell phones. You got to get the announcements because an engaged person always receives more. So pull out your cell phone right now and capture the announcements. All right, all right, so listen. First timers, we've been waiting for you. If this is your first time joining us here at Faith City Central, that's right. We want to love up on you. We want to acknowledge you, so please stand up right now. Stand up, stand up. You hear all those cheers? Those are just for you because we knew you were coming. So we are so excited about your attendance on today. Make certain that you grab your gift because that's right, we have a gift for you. We knew you were coming. So if you did not grab it coming in, make certain that you grab your gift prior to leaving on today. Thank you so much, and you may have your seat. 
So this is the last week, the last week to use the hashtag, hashtag FCC Perfection 30. That's right. If you have a point that captured your attention, a major takeaway, or if you want to post a selfie, do that and please use the hashtag on all of your social media platforms. We want to connect with you there. Oh my word. Visionaires Sunday. Ooh, it was absolutely magnificent. We laughed, we cried, we danced, we sold our seeds. Let me tell you, we shut the place down. We shut it down. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I just have to shout out our events committee. Thank you all so much for everything you did to make that event absolutely memorable because it was. So congratulations on 30 years and several more years to come. Ladies, remember, this is the month breast cancer awareness to schedule your appointment for your examination. This is the last week, so make certain that you get your appointment scheduled, and men, you as well. Queens in Transition, grades 6 through 12. Registration begins on Sunday, November the 5th. It's only $75. You can register in REM. Hey, listen, you have to join Women Walking in the Word. Yes, they have a new book that they're reading. Here it is, Disruptive Thinking by Bishop T.D. Jakes. And remember, just last week, Pastor shared during Bible study that the biggest house always have the biggest library. So make certain that you join the book club. On Facebook, it's www Focus Faith, and we look forward to you joining us. We're going cruising. We're going cruising July the 13th through the 18th. Guess where we're going? We are going to Cozumel, Mexico. You have to say it like that. It's Mexico and Coco Bay, Bahamas. It's going to be amazing. So grab your families because GGG is taking over the ship and we want you to be a part. So join us virtual or either in person for our next Bible study Wednesday at our Be More campus. We look forward to seeing you there. So remember to scan the QR code for the announcements. And before we close out, I want you to remember this. If you aren't willing to stretch, no one can help you. However, if you are determined to stretch, you are unstoppable. Welcome to the Stretch Zone. All right, all right, all right. Is it okay if we praise God one more time together? I don't know if I can hear y'all. I said, is it okay if we praise God one more time? I invite you to stand to your feet once again. We're gonna do this song together, all right? Let's go. Put your hands together, hey. So let it
get off the stage. Y'all get off. Y'all get off the stage. Y'all get off the stage. FCC, I want to know anybody been stretched. Anybody been stretched? Come on, let me see if you wave your hand if you know you've been stretched. If you know you've been stretched. It has been. We're still high. I don't know about you, but I am still flying off of last week. It's been an awesome time. And we are, come on, say we are. Come on, say it like you mean it. We are FCC. I am Faith City Central. And why don't you give God a praise right there where you are? Right there where you are. I just want to ask this one question as, as we continue to move. I just want to ask the question. What did God do for you over this last week? What did God do for you over this last week? What did God do for you over this last week. What did God do for you? We're going to bring in Baltimore in a minute, but I just need to know, if, if, if you can say, if, how was last week to you? If you had one word or one phrase, what would that be? If you could stand on your feet and just shout it out, what would that one word be? What would it be? Awesome. Okay, give me, give me somebody else. Give me, come and stand on your feet. Let me hear you real loud. Glorious. Okay. Phenomenal. Come on, everybody, just stand on your feet right there where you are. Incredible. Inspirational. Say it again. Say it again. Informational. Transformational. Okay, thank you. Amen. Supernatural. Say it again. Epic. Come on, somebody say epic. All right, come on, what, sit back in the back. What, what, what happened with you back there in the back? Anybody back in the back? Let me hear you. Stand up real loud and clear. Let's hear one word. What, what was it to you last week? What was it? Bless. Okay, say it again. Excellent. Miraculous. Okay, hey man, I got you. Okay. Say it again. Wonderful. Say it again. Phenomenal. Iconic. Whoa, that's good. Radical? Well, it was, let me just say, yes, come on, little man. Glorious. Come on, somebody say glorious. You say challenging? It was. It, it, it was a really uh, awesome time, and we just want you to know, don't stop. Don't stop. Continue. Share with somebody. This, it's been one of those times that I can truly say it's etched in my memory that I will never forget. 2023 Stretch Conference. And I'm going to you know because the mighty man of God, the visionary of this house, just walking on in from Southeast D.C., anointed of God. He is the captain and the apostle, Dr. Michael A. Freeman of Faith City Central. Act like y'all know. Come on, y'all. Act like you know. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Receive the man of God. Receive him. That's, that's my, my grand kiss. She just reaching out for me. She, she, I always say, hey, 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 Lee, Lee. God bless you. You make me feel brand new. For I thank God for you. Make me feel brand new. I 
I've never had music to, I've been singing this to her since she was born. She sings it now. Uh, yeah, and does a fine job of it. And then Tim tried to come and take over my song. Let me, let me have that, let me have that. No, no, my check. Got my check, man. Got... <laughs> got my check. I got my check. Somebody gonna give me my check. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I got my check. Put my check with me. Put my check up here. Put it on the steps. Put it on the stage. Woo! I got my seat. Y'all sure did. You sure had your seat. Oh, my word. I have never in all of my days seen such spiritual pandemonium. Amen. That was super califragile. That was beyond. No, I've never seen giving like that anywhere. Never. Any of you all? Have you ever seen giving like that anywhere? I, I have not heard so many $30,000, What in the world? Who is the pastor of this? <laughs> My word. That was, that was phenomenal. Uh, but it's time that we normalize wealth. Every last one of you should understand that that's a part of your origin. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I come from wealth. Look, look on somebody on the other side who ain't so stuck up. <laughs> Say, I have come from wealth. <laughs> and this is what the Lord told me concerning your seed at this point. Y'all better hear this. And I dare you to shout it. I'm in the middle of a miracle. <laughs> I, I didn't think I was going to get this drunk again today. And what took me so long, I didn't stop down Temple Hills till like 10. And the driver drove like a bat in a Dracula movie. Yeah, Sonia, you better get in the microphone. Uh, how, 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 how can I say thanks for all you've done for me? I try to keep it low so when you come in there. Things so deserve, so deserve. That you gave to prove your love for me. The voices, the voices of a million angels cannot express. Cannot express. Cannot express my gratitude. Don't cut me short. Don't cut me short. Go for it. All, All that. that I forever hope to be lift your hands and say I owe it all I owe it all to thee I dare you to shout with it to God to God, to God. be the glory 
to God. To God be the glory. To God. Be the glory. I know I'm late coming to this party, and you all well in it, but just oblige me. Amen. Uh, and you, 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 you might be seated, please. Um, yeah. Y'all too. That's so sweet. Uh, yeah, be seated. Thank you. <laughs> On her behalf. We were laughing. We were laughing uh, this morning. <clears throat> I was telling her how she needed to just, you know, slow things down and, you know, everyone isn't perfect. You know, you got to learn how to embrace your mistakes. And then she turned around and gave me a hug. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, that ain't funny. I, I, I want to just talk. Can I just talk today? I thought I was going to continue with my, yeah, just flow, right? I thought I was just going to get back into agape and honor, but it was such agape and honor demonstrated uh, this, this past week uh, and weekend. I have never in all my days, I, you know, when I saw the Howard County police come in, I was like, how thoughtful, huh? It was Andy Rundle County? I thought it was Howard County. When I saw them come in, I was like, how thoughtful they to hear the for extra measure of security. <laughs> they said, them people are here to put you out. <laughs> Were you all there? Did you all see them? A lot of you all had left by then because they were kicking us out. And I didn't think it to be right and fair. And some of you all were so enthusiastic that you just kept coming, giving your seed regardless if you were seen or heard. Yeah. Some without microphones. Yeah. And I'm seeing this demonstration, I'm saying, God, who are these people? <laughs> and so in reflection of all of the things, well, first of all, uh, Pastor Tim, talk about John P. Key for a minute. Anybody like John P. Key in here? Well, um, John B. Key called and he asked if he could host his uh, new CD tour here this Friday. And your amazing pastor consented to it. So this Friday is a free John P. Key concert right here at the Brandywine location, 7 o'clock. You want to get here early. I talked to Pastor John yesterday, sir. He said he's expecting a full house and we want to make sure our own is taken care of. So get here early and we'll see you Friday night. Yeah, I, I, I love, uh, I, like, uh, I like Pastor John. He's an amazing man. I told him I was a fan. He said, wait a minute, I'm a fan of yours. You know, I'm, I'm becoming a big deal these days. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm tripping. Um, Bree, can I tell them what happened to, to, to you this past week? I <laughs> cannot. Okay, okay, this may take. Will you preach it better? No, you yes, tell come on. No, come you on. Tell okay, okay. Come on, Bree. So, so how, on, how many of y'all know? How many y'all know Bree is expecting? That's good. 
again. So now somebody else, you done made somebody else hide in here already. I saw them just slide right Let's on just, underneath uh, their chair. <laughs> who wants a baby and can't have one? You're married. Oh, that's good. And you've, you've never prayed told, for them. You've been told you couldn't have a baby, you couldn't you can't conceive. And now, huh? You thought that you couldn't, and you found out yesterday that you are. Come on, please give me credit. That, did I lay hands on you? No. I didn't lay hands on you? No, she's not hearing you. I didn't? That gone. <laughs> Dee Dee didn't lay hands on you? You've been in this atmosphere, you a partner here? You've been a partner since 2015. Oh, say, okay, so let me, let me fix this up. But it still may be some. You ain't gotta have me lay hands on you. All you gotta do is receive by faith wherever you are in the faith fertile atmosphere. But I, I wanted to get my hands on. What about in Baltimore, Pastor Wayne? No, I don't see any hands raised high. <laughs> What's happening over there? <laughs> You want babies? Can Have I prayed for you? You pregnant now? Okay, did you go out and buy some boy stuff? You did? Just boy stuff? <laughs> it's unisex. Oh, homie don't play that. I mean, there are a lot of unisex stuff there, but I don't play that. Uh, go out and buy some boy stuff. Because you, you all need a boy. You need a man child. First, how many you want? Two. Twins. Okay. Did I lay hands on you twice? <laughs> Everybody stretch forth your, your hands when say receive. receive. Conceive. Conceive. Double. In Jesus' name. Um, so, so, so we all trying to figure out what Pastor Bree is having. And I told her, what I told her was give me the responsibility. What, what is that, uh, Josephine? That's boy stuff? You want a boy? Stanley? Sander, that's his name? Xander. That's his name. Xander? Dur or Dor? Dur, Xander. And you got a blue shirt for him. I saw you lift up a blue shirt. I, I, don't, I mean, if you didn't want me to see it, why'd you? Oh, okay, praise the Lord. You're trying to cover her. Oh, you're nursing? Oh. Well, get the camera. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus. Get, get, Y'all got the camera down on the door? Oh, praise the Lord, Jesus. Christ. What a ministry. That, that's funny. <laughs> okay, move on, Mike. Uh, what's your story? What's so, so, so I told Pastor Bree, Tim, let me be responsible for you know, getting the, the, the word from the, the doctor because I'm the one that gives the better gender reveal. Well, I hadn't had a chance. It was my turn. No, no, no. They want to do it privately. So, unbeknownst to me, they give it to someone else who can bake a cake for them. Just start putting the pieces together. Bake. Bake a cake, right? So 
We're at the gender reveal because they want to do it alone, just with their family. But, but so we are via FaceTime, DD and all the family, Brittany, all of us. And we're standing there on the phone and we're waiting. The kids are around. Now, mind you, you know, they got two girls and one boy. How many of y'all know a boy is the will of God? Well, she cuts the cake and she drops her hand like this and goes over to Tim and just put her head in his arms and Tim says something like avocado, whatever that means. Was, was that a code for the house? Where was that? It's a, it's a meme video. The boy says avocado, yay. Avocado, yay. Wait, wait, and, wait but look. And Sophie said, avocado. Yay. Avocado, yay. I wish y'all could see Sophie. Okay, we just sharing put, family moments. Please moment. put that up there. We're sharing the family moments. Sophie won a boy, but they told her it was a girl. She like, yeah. And Tim trying to turn on and she's like, yay, she avocado. She said avocado. And Bubba, on the other hand, Bubba Cresswell is like, yay, because he won a little sister. That's because he thinks Celine is a boy and she's rough because she has no hair. Look, she's looking at me now like, what? Like, Celine cannot be a girl the way she acts. So, Breland turns the cake around and we all see it pink and I'm like, this cannot be true. But you did really good. You really did good. Your heart said this could not be true, but you were so supportive. I, I was like, oh, oh we, love, we love that's her. beautiful, It's Brie. okay. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe I mean, it's a joke. Go see I'm if it's another cake. I said, cake turn the cake off. around. It's a prank. Turn the cake around and cut it again. <laughs> she cut through that thing. We dug through that. She dug through that cake. <laughs> I, I said, go check the front joke. door. It's a cake out on the porch. <laughs> Got to be another cake. And please, please, please be another cake. And Brittany, because Brittany had already said God showed her it was a boy. And so Brittany was like, oh. Me, I could care less. It don't matter to me. I'm like, oh, here, here we go again. It's just more work for me, whatever it is, boy or girl. Doesn't matter. I hope you enjoy your family and sharing special moments together. You know, I attended two memorial services just to digress in a bit on yesterday, and it was like a sobering reminder that, man, we're not going to have each other always. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm never going to take you for granted anymore, anymore. Say, I'm going to take advantage of every moment I have with you. And so, uh, and so we all could get off the phone, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little troubled, but I'm saying, okay, Lord, you know, like, this is going to be a girl forever. I mean, it ain't like going to go away. <laughs> so I'm thinking about Bree, and about an hour later, no, maybe. about 30 minutes later, the phone rings, and Bree is screaming, it's a boy, it's a boy, oh my God. She's running all outside, it's on film. She's running all outside, because Tim gonna walk the dog. I don't know if he gonna jump off a bridge or, and, and I don't know, what were you thinking when she came out? Um, I don't like confusion. I have a problem with confusion. So immediately I'm trying to process how could this be so when we saw uh, pink in the batter. So and, and the pink in the batter, right. Yes, sir. So that's what was going through my mind. Well, she called the baker. I'm just leaving names out of it. But they real close to me, though. Okay. Very close. 
like, like the next born under her. We ain't going to call no names. But you'll understand but, why. But he gets the envelope from the doctor, and he opens the envelope, and there's this pink piece of paper in there. So, so what would you assume? He looks at the pink piece of paper and like, it's a girl. So Bree calling like, this can't be. This, the, he said, here's the envelope, here's the paper. Bree, Bree like, is it folded? What, what is it? It was folded. She said, unfold it. <laughs> she, she is not accepting this girl. <laughs> she was sweating too. You know that awkward sweat you get when you're not happy? It was that dude, that light film dude, that was like on her brow, mustache, you know, the forehead. Awkward sweat. I would've loved her if, she, if it was a girl. I know you would've loved her, but you were going through, baby. Because Brie really have never liked children. But now, she likes hers. She may not even like yours. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff's like, okay, I'll op he opens it up and he's in shock. What would you think, Jeff? What did you, when you saw it, what? Well, everybody knows you now. You can... <laughs> He's trying to act invisible. He like yeah. this. Do you even see like, me? We can see you. What What did you think? Like, I, I, I was elated. You were elated. Yeah, because I didn't know she was believing God for a boy. And to be able to look at the paper, when I looked at the paper, she it, it was pink. She couldn't see me look at the paper. Yeah, so you opened it up. And I'm realizing. And you realizing. Why would they do that? Yeah. I, Why would they put a boy? I wasn't would, thinking that at that moment. You would, at that moment, you wouldn't think it. So, so you just turned the paper around and held, and held it up, and she saw that boy on there. <laughs> oh my word! So we're having a baby boy, and his name shall be called. You know, I named Cresswell. Yeah, they already have a name. Sophie named him. But we pray Please, Sophie. let's see this. Did they put the video up? I just need y'all to see this. We're going to hurry what? up and... Did they... She had it. Hurry, baby. If you don't have it, that's okay. Play that video. Okay, uh, just get it prepared if you have it. Don't worry about but it. But I want to see the other um, uh, video. Because last week, uh, I haven't come down off of yet. And I want to share some things with you that you must know concerning what you need to do after you have given. Um, let's see the video of just the recap, if you have that of last week.
Wow, 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 wow. Uh, thank you seems to be so inadequate. Even saying it back to you all because you don't do 30,000, 30,000, 30 years. I heard 30,000 so much last week. You don't do 30 years like this without people like you. Would you please give each other a great round of applause. Pastor Wayne, say something. Yeah, well, hey, you know when I saw that shield go into, shield go into the ground? That's a 30-year seed that's going into that ground that FCC is going to harvest in years to come. I, I, I'm telling you, and, and it's wild, those who came in late, even after, are going to receive something that they didn't even work for because we already sold 30 years ahead of time, man. Come on, let's just give these next 30 years a good God bless you. Hey, Pastor Mike, I want, before you say anything, uh, is it possible you could sue the, uh, the baker? Can the baker be sued? <laughs> nah, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, he did. He made that cake uh, in three hours. Well. He was so uh, pressed. We, we certainly wanted to rebuke the baker. No, it was funny. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Yes, it was. And yeah, the cake for, was so pretty. For uh, mental anguish. <laughs> yeah, stress. Huh? Emotional stress. I was, I was harassed. So um, yeah, Pastor Wayne. Because the one who came in at the end of the day got the same pay as the one who came in at the beginning of the day. That's Bible. And whether you gave or whether you were present, like as this championship team has won the championship game, everybody gets a ring. Did you hear what I said? Don't you dare. I bind any spirit of condemnation, guilt, uh, jealousy. Yeah, all that should be thrown in there. Uh, what else? Regret, remorse, um, shame. Because if you didn't give, I don't know it. Because there were so many who gave. I ain't miss none of y'all. I, I, was, I was wondering, when is this line going to stop? Were, were any of y'all? I mean, I didn't want it to stop, but we had to leave. So there are people who, you know, may have felt a certain type of way. Don't. Don't let the devil harass you about anything that you were incapable of doing, or if you just decided not to. <clears throat> Everyone on last week made a decision. What did I just say? Everyone on last week made a decision. You made a decision to come or not come. You made a decision to give or not give. That's your decision. Stand by it. Don't be harassed by or feel any type of way. Now, I'm going to share some things with you because I've never done 30 years of ministry before, and there were a lot of things that were unfortunately omitted. And uh, along with things, people omitted unintentionally. Nobody ever, no, no one ever 
you know, stayed up late fasting and prayed and sackcloth and ashes to try to intentionally leave you out or forget you. My father used to say, because he used to always try to call names. And, and I, I follow a lot of things that my father has done. And I've tried to call names too, Brandy. And Dee Dee jumps me and she says, uh, don't do that because inevitably you're going to leave someone out. And I don't know why any of you all will feel any type of way from your name not being called. That, that don't, don't go for that. And here are the things I want to share with you based upon the scripture. Go to, go to 2 Peter chapter number 11, verse 12. Well, let's look at 11. Did I say chapter 11? It's no 11. Chapter 1, verse number 11. That's where we'll start. Um, and some of you may be here today, like uh, at 8 o'clock service, there were people who were there last week and didn't want to get in line. Or there were, there were some who were not there and wanted to get in line. I'm going to provide those opportunities. Hey, uh, Tara, make sure we get microphone stands at Temple Hill. We have microphones. We have microphones? Yeah, that's what you saw. Oh, they told me that we didn't have any. I know, but we have microphones. I know. They brought two out after they told me we didn't have any. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you think the baker was involved in that okay, team? you're not going to do that. Oh, I, oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. For so an entrance will be supplied to you. Mm. Woo, will be supplied to you abundantly into everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Say a, a portal. A Say an entrance. Yes. It's supplied to me. Into everlasting life. Into everlasting Through, life. Jesus Christ, Through Jesus Christ. My Lord, my Lord. and Savior. Verse number 12, please. Yeah. For this reason, I, the Apostle Peter is saying, will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though, though you know and are established in the present truth. I, and I don't know if he was just giving them credit because he said, though you know them. Sometimes when we're talking to people and they're not uh, doing something that we know they should know, we'll say, I know you know this, but let me. And they really obviously don't know or they're not performing it. Mm, you could know some things and still don't perform it. Though. Pardon me? Do, don't you feel like you can know some things and still not perform them? Like you say to your kids, I know you know better. Okay. Good. That's another angle. So the Apostle Peter is saying, though you know these things and are established in the present truth, he says, I won't be, or I think it me, or necessary, I think it right, as long as I'm in this body, as long as I'm in this tent, he was referring to his body, to do what? Stir you up by how? Reminding you, Reminding you sometimes, you know, I just forgot I had an appointment, and they'll call and say, Pastor, you know, I'm like, oh, snap. They just stirred me up and they reminded me. So I want to remind you of some things that you very well may know. Uh, go now to chapter 3 of 2 Peter and get your eyes over there on verse number 9. Now, I'm lifting this up and out contextually, I'm off because this is not consistent with 
what Peter is sharing, but there are principles concerning and even the nature of God that you'll see I'm justified in doing exactly what I'm doing at this moment. Okay? Um, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay, I want to lift that up. I want to lift that up. Now, this is specifically speaking about the first part of the second coming. Because there are two parts of the second coming. There are what? Two parts of the second coming. The first part of the second coming is when he comes back for the saints. The second part is when he comes with the saints. Okay, there are two parts of the second coming. The first part is what, class? When he comes back for the saints. The second part is what? When? When he comes back with the saints. Are you clear on that? Anyone not clear? Okay. And you're going to be a part of both of that. And those who are alive and remain will be caught up, coming for the saints. But they won't impede those who died before that. Boom. They're going to get their bodies. Boom. Forever they will live with the Lord. That's not my lesson. Can I move on? Okay. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Have you ever felt like you were waiting so long for something God has promised you? It was as though you're not going to get it. Yes. Well, I got good news for you. Yes. The man ain't slack. Because, you know, concerning even this particular scripture, H.O., you would think he's slack about the coming because he says, but he is long-suffering towards us. In, in other words, he's just putting it out, putting it out. Why, folks? Why is he putting off and delaying his coming? Because he's not willing that any should go to hell. I mean, God's holding this off so the church can get to work in a greater capacity to go and get unsaved saved. And you should start with your own household. Amen. Pastor Wayne, D, do you want to jump in there somewhere? <coughs> no, go ahead. Keep on. Ba baby, you, you, you okay? So, because coming up, man, when I was a child, we were singing, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Mm -hmm. Oh, soon. Y'all know that song? How long ago you been? Well, what is soon? Stop it, stop it. Y'all just singing. How long is soon? And back in the day, I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't come too soon because, man, I want to get some. You probably was thinking about getting married because you probably already got some. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let me embrace my mistake. <laughs> Pastor Wayne, would you say something right here, please? Because I may say it. Not, not to that one, not to that one. <laughs> Okay, praise the Lord. See, uh, this agape and honor thing <laughs> will, will alter your, response. your responses. Because you may want to clap back in the flesh. <laughs> but you move on in the spirit. Move on, move on. And then, my children used to hear the same thing. Jesus coming soon. they like, Dad, stop saying that. Cause, and then they were all virgin. <laughs> Breathing, you were saying that, right? You wanted to get something before. The nasty thing. That's why. Jesus, hold up. Wait a minute. He need to come, because if y'all at the rate y'all going, you're going to populate the Fort earth. Washington. <laughs> so when is he coming? 
He says it's coming in the day and an hour that no man knows. But it's coming fast. It's coming fast in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. You won't be ready to pack up and get ready to go because that will be too late. You better be ready and packed and on your way. Hunter and said, that word was just for the people right behind us. <laughs> okay. But now we can all testify that he who has promised is faithful. Yes. Isn't he faithful? Yes. Won't he do it? Has God exceeded any of you, uh, you all's expectations ever? And that's what people come up with these dumb sayings. They don't mean to be saying dumb things, but they, he may not come when you want him. But the moment you ask, that answer was released. Woo, Jesus. I said, ooh, Jesus. I said, the moment you ask, the answer has already been released. We don't wait till the battle is over or until we have it in our hands. We shout now. I dare you to shout. I'm in the middle of a miracle. Ay, 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 ay. Just because. Okay, go ahead. It, it, it's amazing when, when, when you said that, and, and, and as you were saying that about the last part, that's why when we pray, he said, believe that you receive. Like, like you can't, you, you, he said, he's telling you to do two things. Like, first he believed, you, you got to believe that what he said is so. But, but the minute, he said, the minute you ask, it's, it's released. So God is really trying to tell you what he just said but he need us to receive it. Something can be released, but if you don't receive what has been released, watch this, you'll try to blame it. The devil will make you blame it on the one that sent it instead of looking at the one who didn't receive it. And, and I'm telling you, God is not slack concerning his promises. You gotta know that God will keep his word and the moment that you ask, it's released and you got to believe you receive in your spirit so you can bring it out so it can be seen. Because God can't bring anything on the scene. He got to drop it at the borderline of the unseen in your spirit. And we are the ones that got to bring it from the unseen on the scene so it can be seen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now, if you fail to understand that it's already worked out on your behalf, you may be empowering Satan to interfere because that particular scripture that comes from Daniel, where he told Daniel, from the day you set your face to ask me for what you asked, I sent the doggone thing. From the day you asked. It's three weeks later, and Daniel's getting an answer. He said, but the prince of Persia, there are demonic forces. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That's trying to devoid you of what you've asked for. That's why you got to stay in faith. Shout out, walk by faith. I walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by sight. So he's not slack concerning his promises. So if you have been in a position of waiting on the manifestation or seeing the manifestation of something, don't you get your eyes in the wrong place. Come on, come on. Don't get your eyes in the wrong place. Come on. 
Keep your eyes on the word of the living God. Okay, y'all pay attention to what I'm saying. No, I know them babies moving. I understand that. They God, they're going to have so many babies. We're going to be distracted for a long time. <laughs> y'all got to stay focused. <clears throat> That's good, though. It was this woman in this ministry. She going to the pastor to report people who were just all over the place while he was ministering. Like, you should see this person. They just talking and just on the phone. And I know they ain't on their Bible because I looked and I saw that, 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 that. So the pastor said, baby, uh, here, you take these two cups of water. And she said, huh? Take these two cups of water. And, and he filled them up just to the point, turn to your neighbor and say, if you don't wake your dog on tail up, hunt your, hunt your neighbor, everybody in so we won't know which one it is. So he said, while service is going on, I want you to walk around the sanctuary twice. But don't let any of the water spill out of the cup. So she took her first lap around, and she's making sure. She got around one time, not a drop fell out. Pastor looked at her. She looked at Pastor. She went around a second time. He going on with service. Why is he walking she got back around, not a drop fell out. She said, Pastor, I, he said, uh, what were the people doing while you were walking around? She said, I don't know. I was paying attention. Not to the <laughs> you got your attention shift on so many other things. When I'm up talking, you better keep your eye on your water. I'm in the middle of a miracle. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a miracle. Now, I like that. I do. I mean, because you was talking about just as it relates to why you're up talking, but even on what they have sown, because the enemy would love to get their attention on things that are happening and going on in your life around you and make you lose focus of why you sowed your seed from the beginning. You know, like a bill to come up and you start thinking, wow, if I would not have sown that seed, then I would have been able to meet that bill. But the Bible says to be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. Come on, show them, Pastor Mike. Tell them. That's how you do it. You keep your focus right there. And that's the whole premise of faith, really. I mean, when you think about... Uh, over there in Mark 11, when Jesus... Don't go to another scripture, baby. Okay. Why are you going to open that up? Don't do that. Okay, you know, go I ahead. I get excited. I, I don't do. want to hear when what I get Jesus home. What Jesus say? <laughs> my focus is over on the I right place. I thought I was going to slip that no, in. You, you weren't going to slip that one in. My focus is right where it's supposed to be. I mean, because a lot of people think delay means denial. And when they don't see their seed producing as fast as somebody else's, those are the things that will cause you to become distracted and lose what you're supposed to reap from. And I don't, and that's the whole premise of this whole thing today. Pastor Mike wants to tell you, now what? Now that you're sowing your seed, now what? Because the enemy saw what you sowed. And so he's going to try to distract you and get you off course of what you have sown. Like every Sunday, the Word of God is sown in your heart. And you have the responsibility of protecting whatever is sown in your heart. The same way you have a responsibility to protect the Word of God that's sown in your heart, you have a responsibility to protect your seed that was sown in the ground. And so instead of looking at what going on around you, you look at what you've sown and you look at what you wanted to produce. Do you hear what I'm telling you? So keep your focus. Keep looking at that water. I won't go into the other, other scripture. Okay, so then now watch this. You'll have people in the interim that will come to you who have not maintained this steadfastness 
and ask you what's going on with your harvest. You got anything yet from that seed? You better, you better get them people out of your face. No, no, you, 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 ooh, Jesus. Somebody who has bit or taken the bait from Satan to start this discord in your heart to get you opposing the order of God after you. Look at your neighbor and say, I sold too much money to let the devil in on this deal. No, 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 no. I sold too much money to let the devil in on this deal. And so you'll become weary in well-doing. And especially if they left their name off the program or they didn't mention your name, but you gave your seat, and now you just want to share it with somebody. I, I, I just want to share this with you. I, y'all, y'all better pay attention. Now, go to Hebrews. You know how I know God loves coffee? 30 years, you got to get a new one now. You got to get a new one. Oh, 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 oh. oh, okay, I'm going the other side. This one said, Hebrews. Okay, move on. I know, I know. I'm closing chapters. I'm turning pages. Glory to glory. Faith to from faith. I'm moving on. Hey, hey. Uh. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Hebrews 6. Let me help you with something. Because if you were left out of something, it was such a blur. It, it, was, it was so many things going on. It's so fast. It's so fast. And some people did this and some people did that. You know, and I've been around ministries for so long that I know, Pastor Reynolds, you know, <coughs> Pastor Rick, you know, <coughs> uh, Pastor Jeff may miss it. Uh, <laughs> he got that dumb smile on his face like that. <laughs> but the paper was pink. Lord Jesus. There are a lot of boys around here dressed in pink. In our culture. And they really boys. A lot of girls dressed in blue. Don't, don't get confused. Okay, praise the Lord. And I've watched people faint because their names were not called after you've given what you've given. Leo, your name wasn't called. You were not acknowledged. Nobody put your name in the walk of fame, walk of faith. No, nobody gave you a letter off the old building. And now, what was this? I did all this work in this ministry. And this is the thanks I get for it? Let me let you show something. Go to verse number 11. Or 10. Go to 10. And baby, look at the NLT, TPT, and then NIV. Okay, I'm at the TPT then. NLT. What order did I tell you? Baby, just look down on the screen in front. I said NLT. Right, they got it. TPT. You right. trying to help her out? No, but they got uh, New King. Jack yeah, the way they coming along. They, NLT is right there, though. Oh shoot. See, see, if you get your eyes off the pink paper, 
And look down there. It's right down there. Okay. That's Pastor Wayne up there. Okay, praise the Lord. For God is not unjust. For he God is not what? Unjust. For God is not what? Unjust. For God is not what? Unjust. For God is not what? Unjust. What does that mean? That he is just. Yeah, yeah. He's righteous. The righteous are those who've been declared just. Unjust are unrighteous. Righteous are just. So the Lord is not unrighteous. Mm -hmm. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him. And how hard you have worked for who? Him. How, look up. How hard you've worked for who? Him. Okay, look up, look up, look up. I got a question for you. Answer the question, class. <laughs> when have you ever worked for him? I said, when have you ever worked for him? I, I can't hear you. Huh? By serving in ministry, you have worked for him. Did it say you've worked for Mike Freeman? Did it say you work for Dr. Didi? Did it say you work for your ED? Certainly, Pastor Dwayne and Lisa, you've worked for them. When you serve in ministry or serve outside of ministry, you have worked for him. Ooh, Jesus. Slap your neighbor and say, I work for the man himself. No, no, see if they, see if they are sleeveless and slap their arm, put a, a bruise on it. And how you have shown your love to who? Yeah. By caring for who? Oh, As? You what? Children. Look at verse number 11. Read it, sweetie. Gee, gee. Okay, I was looking down and you standing in front of it. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in Go. order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Come on, right, next verse. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promise because of their faith and endurance. Now, now, now Pastor Wayne, you've worked very hard in this ministry. Got a question for you. Pastor Rick, you too. I guess Pastor Jeff will get this right. Have you ever needed to be acknowledged by anyone of all these years you have put in the work? No, I, I, I had, didn't have a need, but I think early I had a, a feeling. <laughs> I, 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 I had a... Um, I probably would have had a question early in, early in ministry. But then when I started looking and learning, I found out that I don't need that. The ones who need that to me show me that I got a little growing up to do. Because if you need it, when you don't get it, you'll cut up. Mm. And it's wild because what you are looking for or what you are looking at can be true. But you need to look at, put some value to it to see if it's worth where you're going to. Like, like why pull off the road for a distraction that is true 
when you are going towards the truth. Because something true will keep you in bondage, but truth will keep you always being free. So I am going to put value on like where I'm going because where I'm going carries more weight than what's trying to pull me over on the side of the road. And I think that one years ago, I kind of, I kind of broke that because, you know, one time you grew up, they, you wanted it at the end of the program, your name to be called. And when they didn't get called, you had a little feeling. I, 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 had, I had to break that because you ain't going to do ministry and do it well. You need the applause from somebody else. Because if you are serving, you should be serving for only one audience, and that's him. It's, it's interesting because uh, we have done so well by the Spirit of God with this tag team ministry. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I'm, I make, I, okay, keep that to yourself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're amazing. He'll keep you if you want to be kept. Yes. He and I, we don't even talk about what I'm talking about. Some, in some cases, he doesn't even know when I'm going to teach. And to throw this to him, it's, it's like, I don't know what he's going to say. I guess you would say ditto to what he said. Yes, I would, but I would say it a little more. Okay. In that, I would say when it is, when I need that recognition, it would not be for myself, but for those who are with me to recognize them. You would the want the others to be recognized. That's connected to you. That's connected to you as their leader. Right. But as their leader, let me tell you this. You teach them not to need it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, as their leader, that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, Pastor Jeff, you... you You've never felt that way. He, yeah, he is a behind the scene man and just bake a pink cake. <laughs> I should let that go, shouldn't I? Yeah, I want to have fun, you know. We'll talk about this in heaven. Jesus, you remember the time. <laughs> Pastor Tim. Yeah, I know you need to be recognized. I, oh, ooh, God. I know Pastor Tim Bowman's name must be called. And most people do. Most Mo people do most what? Most people deduce because of um, my exuberance <laughs> for life and my big personality that that's my disposition and that couldn't be further from the truth. I often teach Faith City not to need it because once you need those things right in line with what Pastor Dwayne was saying, you give your keys away to your destiny. You're no longer in control. So now if I need something from you, I've taken the keys from my hand on how I'm going to govern myself and I've given it to you for you to drive. You turn on, I go. If you turn off, I'm stagnant. So you're, you're being dictated to by the gas I'm giving you. Absolutely. I call it the dangers of an extrinsically motivated minister. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm getting on this side. I don't want any of that to get on me. The danger of an extrinsic motivated minister. The ministry is this. And then you really reduce all of what you could have to that accolade that you got. Because the Bible says, you have your reward. And why leave your reward to a man's mouth? Mm opposed to God's manifestation. Because I'd rather have, I'd rather have what God has for me than have what any man has for me. Okay, look at it from TPT. For God the faithful one is not unfair 
How can he forget the beautiful work you have done for him? He remembers the love you demonstrate as you continually serve his beloved ones for the glory of his name. Keep going. Yes. But we long to see you passionately advance oh my God. Come on, until Paul. the end and find <laughs> your hope fulfilled. So don't allow your hearts to grow dull or lose your enthusiasm for follow the example of those who fully receive what God has promised because of their faith strong Wait a minute. Because of their strong faith and their patient endurance. That's what Pastor Tim was talking about. Your enthusiasm lacks luster simply because you have allowed what you do to be fed by the accolades of man. I think it's good, but I think this is even good because this lesson right here helps you to identify or to locate yourself. Because if you're in need of something... Like, even at the end, I love how when we did have to rush and people couldn't give their names, oh, but man. they still were determined yeah. to come up and to sow their seed. And I was feeling some type of way about you all, and I was thinking, God, I hope they're doing this. I know, it and they were. That's what I'm going to say. Those ones... At the end, they were so excited to just be a part of something that they did not I pray, care. I pray, baby. Well, I okay, pray. Okay, okay, but let me just finish. You know, they could care less when the mics were turned off, and then Tim and I think um, Close started how calling you, how off. How can you confidently say seat. they could, didn't care? I, because of the excitement, you can tell. It wasn't like a dread. It wasn't like somebody got out of line and said, forget it. It was like the endurance, the persistence, the, you know, the stick to itiveness that they had. It's, it, you, you will know the difference if you are extrinsically motivated or you are intrinsically motivated because of how, like Tim was saying, if you are extrinsically motivated, you're always going to want the accolades. You're always going to want somebody to recognize and see what you've done. But when you're intrinsically motivated, just your understanding and you're knowing that you are a part of something greater than yourself and you did that, like to have that willingness of heart and mind like the scripture tells us to do, it's, 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 that's the greatest fulfillment. I was concerned. They kept coming, didn't they? They kept coming. God, you need a mic? <laughs> they kept coming. It was like, and I'm thinking, oh God, they should have an opportunity to give this seed, and my prayer was like, I didn't want any of y'all to walk a, away like you were minimized or your seed or all you. you worked for, and you, you, you sowed uh, uh, the largest seed you've ever sown, a lot of you. And then it's, it's, it's reduced to a moment where you couldn't shine. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, we got, we got all ages in there. We got, we got pacifier stage. We got baby bottle stage. We got, we got sincere milk of the word stage. We got meat eaters. Where my meat eaters at? <laughs> but for all of the babes who did all of this work and you feel like that time was minimized, I need you to hear this. I need you to know God saw you. Yeah. Woo, Jesus. Shout that God saw me. Our, 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 our stewardess, do you call them stewardess? Uh, who flown with the Denise. She's flown with us for so many years. It, it, she, she came up lastly and just said, 25,000 and just walked away. And I'm saying... Like she didn't even care. God saw her. Amen. And if your heart stayed right That's while right. all the giving was giving, watch this, God saw it. Yeah. But if your heart was not right when all the giving, guess what? God saw it.
And if you just were there and you said, I'm, I'm not going to give, and, but pastor asked me to be here, God saw yeah. that. Yeah. God saw that. I saw it. It was most rewarding. Mm -hmm. Who would not want to be appreciated? And from time to time, all of us could use a pat on the back. But, but don't get hooked on that crack. That, that's crack, man. It's, a, it's an addiction. Well, I tell you to go. So there's a few things you need to know. Ooh, I got to get out of here. There's a few things you need to know. And shout this and write this. Everything I have belongs to God. Everything I have belongs to God. Shout it one more time. Say, everything I have. Everything I have. And say this too. And everything I am. Belongs to, God. belongs to God. Okay, and write this one down too and shout this. I first much, I uh, first much, I first must, uh, I first must, what, what was, I first must purpose in my heart that everything is, that his. Everything is his desire. Is his desire. That, I mean, the things that I do like. Oh, man. Are we still online? Okay, I can't say it. Because I purposed something in my heart. I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, but you must purpose in heart. All throughout the scripture, the Bible is clear about a man's giving, a man or woman's giving. In order for you to give, you got to first get that in your heart. See, sometimes, sometimes people are trying to move with their hand without moving with their heart. And your hand will never move until you get your heart moving. Or your hand can get out there without your heart, and if something come up, then that's bigger than, you know, what's in your heart. You'll pull back your hand and allocate it to something else. Okay? But when it's in your heart, you're going to be so focused in on that. Okay, now write this down because here's a part of the instructions. I got to get it out. Continue to save and sow like you did before. Continue to save and sow. Because some of you all gave like I, the, the giving was just, I've never seen it before. And some of you have to, all of you should, because I am. And the Bible says, follow those who through faith and faith. I'm going to say just like I was saving to sow again. However, I'm not sowing again. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. God has to make that call. Yeah. But now, you have to normalize your sowing. Yeah. Okay, so like, because I ain't going to be sowing like this. I would like to. But I, I'm not going to try to keep up with this. That's good. Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, okay, no, Dini, help good. me. No, that's good. No, that's good. He's not saying he's not, because you said I'm not going to sow like, I'm not going to sow again. But you are going to sow, but it's not going to be, you're not going to try to keep up with this measure unless it's God for you to do it. Okay. And you're not going to hear from me concerning sowing yes. again until at least 2030. Now, now I said that, but then God checked me and said to me, who do you think you are? Well, I said it because I believe I got it from him. But if I was wrong, you better cool believe I'm coming them back and I'm going to fix it. Well, I know what I said, but here's what I, has to be, I have to be corrected on. And that's what made Sunday so historical. Because it's possible that you'll never have me providing an opportunity for you to sow like that again. I'm so glad I got in on that because I know 
that that seed is going to cover you for the next seven years. Okay, now, 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 wait a minute, because there's some things that goes along with that. Mismanaging your resources is wickedness. What did I just say? Some of y'all got to stop that frivolous, ridiculous spending. Stop it. Attack debt. Now, it's proven you can, you can save that much money. Some of y'all publicly uh, ate to boy, they want that baby boy, no, twin boys. That man got up and sold $16,000. Was that the largest seed you've ever sown? What was next to it? Maybe 1,000. How you jump from 1,000 to 16,000, you had to purpose that in your heart. Did you just start to save and accumulatively it got up to that amount? Or did you say, we want to do 16? So you wanted to do 1,000 for each year you've been here combined. God, I wish you were here longer. <laughs> but that's what you set in your heart to do. And guess what you did? And you know what I told him? I said, you do not have to sow the whole 16. True or not? Because if you gave five, guess what you've done? You've given the largest seed you've ever sown. And you can take some of that money and take care of some bills. But he took it and put it into the place where he purposed in his heart. Now God, who, who is not unjust to forget. Don't y'all sit around and not make a demand on this. And this ain't no game because I'm telling you now, stop sowing so crazy. But you got to be led by the Lord. I'm telling you this by the letter because you can't keep sowing at the level that you've sown and then take care of personal responsibilities to get not only you, but you and your children, children into another place. Yeah. Most pastors will tell you, the more you give, the more God, that, that's true. But you better understand what you're working with. Because your supply isn't where you need it to be right now. And, and them boys gave me, them, my sons in ministry gave, gave me so much money, I got the 300000 back and plus. Long before I had them boys here, the pastors that is, the 300 was back. Because I purposed that in my heart. You know, as a people group um, that's African American, y'all showed up to this financial party late. We have not been advised. We have not been taught. We have not been counseled. We have not been instructed concerning finances. And then you get 50, 60, almost 70 years old, and you're finding out, I should have handled my stuff a lot better. All this money I've had come through my hands, what in the world have I done with it? Now, don't despise me and think I'm up here to try to get something from you because I'm trying to get you ahead of the game. Now, you're sown. When that harvest starts rolling, and it is hit already. It's hit already. Somebody came to me last night and said, I got half of the biggest offering that I've ever sown come back to me already. I decree that there's an acceleration on your harvest, that you are in the middle of a miracle financially. Now, 
Here's what you must know. Mismanaging your resources is wickedness. Don't go buy the pocketbook now. I've been wanting it, Louis. Louis been wanting you. <laughs> but Louis's bottom line look far better than your bottom line. Somebody came to me not too long ago and said, uh, why didn't you put your name up there on Bannister Ford? Why wasn't it Bannister and Freeman Ford? Try, try and throw me off. I said, you know what? It really doesn't matter to me if my name is up on the building. As long as my name. Oh, suck it, suck it. Somebody hear what I'm saying. I'm stuck now. I'm stuck. As long as my name on that check. You ain't got to have no brand name, nothing. While they looking at what you got on, you start focusing on what you got in. The bank account, that is. I used to go out in my garage and just get joy. And then I found out how dumb it was. Because it was a lot of debt in that garage. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of debt. Liability, liability, liability. It was painful. It, just it was didn't painful. Have any kind but of it appreciation. Was the appreciating assets. Absolutely. Now you know where I look to get that joy? Your portfolio. My portfolio. I look at that portfolio and I say, get out of here. There should be a consistency. Now, you want to start where you are. Now, when the harvest rolls in, a double up on the bill that you're almost finished with. Double up on it as much as possible. Knock that one off first. When you, this is elementary, my dear Watson. When you knock that one off, Use all the money on both. You ain't got no extra money because the bill's been paid. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'll let you know when you got extra. Because I got millions in the bank right now and won't go buy a $200,000 car. Because I got a daughter-in-law that I found out don't even have a life insurance policy. They tell me I can get a $500,000 life in policy, $500,000 life, in policy, a life insurance policy for $104,000. Now, if you could buy $500,000 for $100,000, would you be in? Yes. No, 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 but you can't take it home and show everybody. I mean, it ain't something you can add to your haul. I mean, they ain't going to see this weed. <laughs> They're not going to see the jewelry. They're not going to see the car. But I got a policy that I can pay cash for that would normally take 10 years to pay for, which would cost 140000 But if I buy cash when I get it, that's a very wise investment. And then it just appreciates. And after it appreciates, I can pull money down off of that, buy, off that policy and then just go buy something else with passive income. Yeah. It's income that has nothing to do with what's coming in that I can do with. You don't have enough passive income yet. Go buy a house. Don't take the equity out of your house and fix up your house. Go take the equity out and buy another one and put somebody else in it and let them pay for that one. And watch this. And let their income keep rolling. Don't sell it. Okay, I heard that. I'm calling another financial 
seminar at the turn of this year. Put that in place. Uh, cause, cause, because you got enough money. You, you, you hear from God too well. See, see, and if you if you sitting there talking about, and that's all they talking about in this ministry of money. That's a lie. We're in the season of agape and honor, and then you're going to say all we talk about is money. You're already distracted. We got to get up here. They flashing. Time is up. <laughs> Baby, what did I leave out? I think you covered it. No, those three things. The three things, the on, oh, the last one. The last one. Yeah, approach the opportunity in obedience. Approach opportunity in obedience. That simply means when God tells you to pull the trigger on something, then approach that opportunity because right now, ladies and gentlemen, this ministry has three additional million dollars in an account and owe no one anything. No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. And, and I'll be meeting with the board of directors and we'll sit down and discuss it. I'll meet with the CFO. The CFO has already told me, take, take the $3 million. You don't have to do anything with it right now. Just put it up in a compound interest earning account. Let it, let, it, let it buy more money. Let me, say, let me tell you this, Jeremy. How a man handles money will determine how he'll have it. How old are you, son? 21 years old. Don't make the mistakes of your father and your grandfather just because you see a pink slip. I'm just having fun with that. But like my father and my grandfather made ignorant financial decisions. So have, you can ask them, your father and your grandfather. You're not going to follow that pattern. You ain't going to want to floss and flash and that kind of thing. You're going to start building wealth at 21 years old. I don't care what you don't have in the process. You don't need a Lexus at 21. You, your money ain't coming in as such. All you need is reliable transportation. And, and, and your Uncle Mike will help you. And I'm qualified to help you now. I ain't talking about get a car. I'm talking about manage your finances. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Because I know what I want for you. I once was lost, now I'm found. I once was blind, now I see. I once was broke. I'm wealthy because of what I know, not what I have. Pastor Wayne, get me out of here. Uh, pastor, as, as, you know, God, wait, wait, wait. I sound you know, you so. Wait, 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 wait. I sound so. Wait, 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 wait. The only I, wait, people. Wait, 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 Pastor Wayne. Wait, wait, Pastor Wayne. Wait, wait, Pastor Wayne. Wait. Wait, Pastor Wayne. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. One minute, Pastor Wayne. Yeah, if y'all gonna turn them all and on, y'all gotta be on it. Okay. I know I got to go. And, and people who are online, the people still online? Okay, we'll see you. We walk by faith, not by sight. See you, see you, son. Yeah, see you for a nightcap, no <laughs> doubt about it. Okay, see you. Yeah, okay, y'all can go on Facebook. Okay.